So in the last couple of lectures, we learned what is an interceptor, how to create an interceptor and how to use an interceptor in our Angular application. Now currently, we are using a single interceptor in our Angular application, but we can add multiple interceptors in our Angular application if we want to manipulate requests in different ways. So let's go to VS Code and add one more interceptor to understand how we can use multiple interceptors and in which order we should define them. So currently, we are using only a single interceptor in our Angular application, which is this auth interceptor. But now, inside this services folder, let's go ahead and let's create one more service, one more interceptor, and I'm going to call it login interceptor. And since an interceptor is a service file, we are going to use dot service dot ts. Okay, and let me make this L in lowercase. So here we are simply following the convention and here I'm going to use a hyphen and then interceptor. Let's create this file. Inside this file, let's go ahead and let's create and export a class and let's call it logging interceptor service. And since here we are creating an interceptor, this class must implement HTTP interceptor interface and to use this HTTP interceptor interface we also need to import it from angular slash common slash HTTP okay now since we are implementing this HTTP interceptor interface it enforces us to implement its method called intercept so this we already know from our previous lectures and this intercept method, it is going to receive two parameters. The first parameter will be the request object, which is going to be of type HTTP request. And in order to use this HTTP request, we also need to import it from angular slash common slash HTTP. And here, this HTTP request, it is of generic type. So here we need to specify what type of data this request is going to emit. In this case, we are going to specify any because no matter which type of data the request is going to emit, we want to execute this interceptor for all kind of requests. Then we are also going to specify the second argument, which is next, and it is of type HTTP handler. And again, in order to use this HTTP handler, we also need to import it from angular slash common slash HTTP. Now inside this method, we are not going to write any complex logic. What we are going to do is, we are simply going to log to which URL the request has been sent. So for that, I will use console.log statement and there we will say request sent to URL and then we will specify the URL to which the request has been sent. So for that, on the request object, we have a property called URL, which will return us the URL to which the request has been made. Then, as we have learned earlier, from the interceptor method, we must call next.handle and this handle method we need to pass the request which we want to return from this interceptor. In this case, since we are not modifying the request which we are receiving for this interceptor, here we are simply going to return this original request which we are going to receive for this interceptor method. And here we also need to use the return keyword. So now this logic will be executed for each request we are going to send from our Angular application because here we have not written any if statement and we are not specifying for which URLs we want to execute this logic and for which URL we don't want to execute this logic. So this logic here will be executed for each request we are going to send from our Angular application. So every time a new request will be made from our Angular application, you will see this message logged in the console, request sent to URL and then the request URL to which we have made the request. Now, currently we have simply created the interceptor, but we also need to register this interceptor. So if you remember, in order to register an interceptor in the app module file, inside the providers array, what we need to do is, we need to specify an object. In there, we need to specify the provide property. And to this, we need to specify the injection token. And for an interceptor, the injection token must be HTTP interceptors. 
then only Angular will know that this service is basically an interceptor service. And then we also need to specify use class. And here we need to specify the interceptor service class. So in this case, the interceptor service class name is logging interceptor service. Okay. And in order to use this logging interceptor service, we also need to import it. So I'll try to type it here so that I can import it from this file location. So now it is automatically imported here. And then we also need to specify multi as true because since both these services have the same provider, the same injection token, we don't want to override the previous service with the new one. That's why we are specifying this multi as true so that all these services will be executed. With this, let's save the changes. Let's also save this login interceptor service class. And one more thing which you need to keep in mind is that the order in which we provide our interceptor service, that interceptor will be executed in the same order. So in this case, first the auth interceptor will be executed and after that the logging interceptor will be executed. If we change this order, so if I specify this logging interceptor first and then if I specify the auth interceptor, in that case, the login interceptor will be executed first and after that the auth interceptor will be executed. So this order is very important here. The order in which you provide these services, these interceptor services, they will be executed in that same order. And to prove this, what I'm also going to do is here inside this auth interceptor also, I am going to write a console.log statement and there I will simply say auth interceptor called okay and let's save this file in the login interceptor also before we log this message before that we will log one another message and there we will say logging interceptor called okay let's save the changes let's go to our application there let's open developer console Let's go to console tab. Let me clear everything here. And now let's go ahead and let's click on this create task button. And here let's go and let's create a new task. Let's click on this create task button. And you will notice that when we clicked on that create task button, a post request was sent. And when the post request was sent, first you will see this message auth interceptor called. That means the auth interceptor was called. And after that, you will also see this message logging interceptor called so after auth interceptor only this logging interceptor was called and after that you can see this message request sent to url and then you can see the url to which we have made the request let me clear everything here and now let's make a get request so for that let's click on this fetch tasks button and now you will see in the ui we have two tasks and when we made the get request at that time also you can see auth interceptor was called first and after that only the logging interceptor was called if i try to delete the task so if i click on this delete button a delete request will be sent and before the delete request was sent the auth interceptor was called so some logic was applied on the request using this auth interceptor and after that the logging interceptor was called so as you can see we can use multiple interceptors in our angular application and as we have learned we use interceptors to manipulate the request before it is sent to the server in the same way we can manipulate the received response from the server before using it in our angular application and this is the use of interceptors so in the last three lectures we learned about interceptors in great detail and I have covered each and every topic related to interceptors. So I hope the concept of interceptors is clear to you. But still, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. So this is all from this lecture and from this section. In this section, we learned in great details how to send different types of requests from our Angular application to the server and how to use the response received from the server in our Angular application. In this section, we used Firebase as the backend server 
but the same concepts will be applied to any other type of server. So no matter which backend programming language you are using, whether you are using Python or Node.js or C Sharp or Java, from the Angular application, you are going to send the request in the same way and you are going to utilize the response in the same way which we have learned in this section. Now, in the next section, we are going to learn about authentication and authorization in Angular. And there you will learn the actual use case of using an interceptor. As I have mentioned earlier, one of the use cases of using an interceptor is when we want to send an authorization token with the request. So in that case, we can use an interceptor and you will see that in our next section. This is all from this lecture and from this section. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.